G'day everybody and welcome back to Atlas. And here we are on the new map, kind of play from scratch and give it another go. And those, for those people who are starting Atlas and have not played it before, it'll seem a bit weird when you first start because there's not a lot of prompts to really give you the info on what it is you're going to be doing. At least in Ark you actually have some basic crafting, but in Atlas you start off pretty much with nothing. And while your experience will be slowly ticking up, you need that first level before you can really do any. Because, I mean, you can walk up a punch, which is pretty much your left and your right mouse button if you're on the PC. And you will need to just walk up and punch a tree. It's um, an odd thing to do, but it is what you need to do. The nice thing about Atlas, I guess, as well, is that when you're doing something, like I'm going to combat mode just by trying to start punching, in the top of the screen it'll actually give you a bit of a blurb on what keys will actually do what things. So it's quite handy in that regard. Just pick up a few rocks. And really, at this rate... Can you pick up the shells? I guess not. I need a level. It's just straight up how the game works. You know, you get that first level which allows you to craft some of the basic tools. And while you're waiting for your leveling up, there's probably a few things that you can actually consider including the lovely scenery of the uh, start island. Uh, this pond by the, the giant head, uh, this is actually fresh water. So you can actually come here and you basically use the, the use key on the water and it will allow you to drink. Uh, the other thing that you need to be mindful of is across the right hand side of the screen, there are four colorful bars, uh, yellow, purple, orange, and blue. And they represent your vitamin levels. Now, Atlas have actually said that they're planning on getting rid of them but for the moment they're still in the game and you've got to manage all of your vitamin levels and they re correspond to basically vegetables, uh, berries, fish and meat. So you need to basically have a good spread of everything. And when you look at the things that you collect in your inventory, uh, I have some berries down there. So the SI is your orange bar, your turmeric is your yellow bar. If you kill a creature on the land, you'll most likely get meat that you can cook up. And you'll get that for your, I think it's your orange bar. And then blue bar is handled by fish. So you need to go f swimming and kill a fish. Oh, here we've got a candidate for something that'll give me a level. We'll take out a chicken because we can actually punch one of them. And they run away. Killed the chicken. Didn't quite get the level. How close are we? Oh yeah, we're just about to pop. So we might leave that and we'll just pick up some stuff. Maybe it'll give it to us. There we go. Right, have our first level. First thing that I want to actually buy, well, we actually got to allocate the points. I'm actually going to put it into weight for now. You can respec later, so you don't have to worry about locking yourself in. And I'm going to pick up the basics because this is going to give me some tools for survival. The other thing that I do want to get is the tools of the trade because it's going to unlock things further down the track. So very first thing that I'm going to build is a stone pick. With the stone pick, drag it down onto your slot. It takes a few seconds to actually apply. And we don't want to lose our chicken here. We actually want to use the hatchet on it. So we're going to go and hit a rock. That's going to give us some flint. We'll come back and see if we can find our dead chicken. We're going to make ourselves a hatchet. The difference here is that the pick will give you different resources than what the hatchet does. And when you're using it on a corpse, the hatchet will give you more of the other than meat resources, like your hide and whatever else. In this case, it's skin. And you can actually see here that the skin is a hide resource. And so your hatchet will give you more skin than meat, whereas the pick will give you more meat than skin. And it's more likely that the pick will give you things like your uh, prime meats and things like that. So it's important to consider that. It's the same when you're hitting things like rocks and trees. With a hatchet, you'll actually get more wood from a tree. And with a pick, you'll actually get more thatch from a tree. For the rocks, you can actually hold down the H key in, on the PC and it'll actually give you an idea of what kind of resources you're going to get. Uh, the pick will get more flint and metal, whereas the hatchet will get more stone. So we'll just grab a few of these anyway. Gonna need it all. All right, let's have a look what we've got going now. Uh, I don't think, oh yeah, I can craft some clothes, so we might as well do that. 
I really don't like hats in game, so we're going to make sure that we hide that hat. So what I just did then, I guess, I held down the T key, which gives you your radial menu, and the hide hat is in the play emote screen, and the top one there should be your hide hat. And try and take out the level 3 pig and get a bit more experience. There we go. Should be able to pick up the spears just by walking on top of them. Again, I want more hide than I want meat at this point. So we'll use our hatchet. And that gave me a decent chunk of XP. And really this is the main thing that you're going to be doing at the start. Is you need to practice your basics and actually get some levels. Now while we're here, I can actually see one too. While you're on the start island, if you're lucky, you might actually get some treasure too. So if we grab this. Uh, treasure map for B3. Now, we are on H3. So that's actually a little bit away. So I'm not going to be able to do that one until I get off the island. If we're lucky, we might find a map for this island. See if we can get some treasure as well while we're here. To do that, we will actually need to do some taming. Uh, just so people know, these plants here, that's actually sugarcane. It's great for taming horses. It is of the saps type resource. I do want advanced tools. We're going to move straight into metal tools. And we might as well do the mercantile side of things. It's actually going to allow us to build a base. Alright, so I'm going to go find a good spot. Uh, I have a particular spot in mind. Mainly because it's going to be near some crystal resource, which I actually want to grab. i just got to remember my orientations here. I have to find the start base on it. So that hill there should have crystal on it. So we're going to go build a little shack in front of that. Okay, the last pieces are going in. Ceiling pieces. Whoop. Stand up before it becomes a problem. Done. Okay, so now it's a bit hard to see, but in the right hand side of the screen, there's a little bit of a... It's like almost like a tent. It's actually a house buff. And while you're inside a house and you have that house buff, you're actually getting increased uh, fortitude again so that you can basically resist the elements. So we've got a little starter shack and uh, we need to start building our metal tools. So we had the ability to make a smithy and this is probably going to be the first thing we have to get is a smithy. So I need more metal and I need more stone and basically on the starter island it's really quite plentiful especially when you've got these pure metal notes. Now I have times three I think it is on my harvesting rates, so I will be harvesting a lot faster than what potentially a, a public server would actually have. Oh, here's another part to the game that I have just encountered. When you're totally encumbered and you're totally overweight, you can still crawl. So just remember that. If you're really close to your base, you can over-encumber yourself, but you don't really need to. Okay, so I just made a smithy. We shall place that down. We might put it down in the back corner. There we go. In here, uh, turn folders off for now. All right. So we want our hides that we've been getting. We might as well just chuck a whole bunch of the stuff in there. Uh, metal. Okay, so they get a metal hatchet, metal scythe, shovel. We want climbing picks, which needs fibers. We're going to need a lot more fibers. Okay. Level. Nice. Uh, when you're transferring between the inventory. If you just drag and drop, it will take all the items. The shortcut should be T on the PC, and it transfers everything. If you hold down Shift, it will actually transfer half. And if you hold down Control, it will transfer... I thought it was five. That's only doing one. Ah, Shift and double click is actually doing five at a time. I want half of that. So there's a few different ways you can transfer items. I just have to play around and work out what works for you best. Alright, climbing picks. While you have the climbing pick equipped, you'll see a, a green line that appears. When you left click, it'll actually move you to the position of that green arc. When it goes blue, like that, it means you're about to land. And we're here. We can get some stamina back, because it does use your stamina very, very quickly to do this.
and the magical crystal resource that's on the starter island. I be really yeah, metal pick. Put the climbing picks down there. All right, get a bit of quartz. Now I don't want to grab too much here because your crystal weighs an absolute ton. Now getting down here is probably oh okay, yeah, we got a green line already. You have to be careful going down because uh, you run out of stamina very quick, and when you run out of stamina, you fall. Which I'm about to do. We want to get above land. We should be able to let go. Thought we could let go. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Oh, my torpor is very, very high. I'm just about to pass out. So, why did I go to all that trouble to get the crystal? Although I didn't need that much. I want to get the spyglass. That's the main thing. It's a very useful item. Spyglass done. Now, the reason why the spyglass is useful is... Is there anything off in the distance over there? Okay, it's level 13 chicken. At a distance, you can basically spy out the different types of creatures, especially when you're starting to do things like taming creatures and other things like that. Uh, it will even identify levels of bad ships, like the ships of the damned. And so it's quite useful to have. And to get one off the start, basically, that is where the crystal is, so that you can climb up that hill and get some. Now really, to round out the last of the starter island, it would be good to get a treasure and do a little bit of taming. A10, H3, oh, there we go, nice. Okay, which one are you? That one. When you put these down on your bar, it's not near me now, which is good. Uh, okay, so that's actually from memory. Now zoom in on the map. Yes. That, the, this map is actually on the the very very the start the building that you start in is where this map actually is pointing me to. The only yeah, no, it's definitely not this one. Uh, basically, here on this map, zoom out again. So in H3, we are on the very very right hand island, basically equidistant throughout the entire H3 area. There are four islands which are identical, and we're going to now have to find which one is the right one to do the treasure. Also to do the treasure we're going to need to do some taming because we can't take it on ourselves because we'd just get uh, killed by the armies of the damned. Okay, taming level 2 is now available. Why do I want taming level 2? Well, it's these pigs. Possibly that bear that I saw back there. Well, I haven't got the necessary things to tame a bear yet. What we need to do now is find a decent level pig. We're going to tame it. I think 32 or 36 is the highest level on this map. So we've got to see if we can find some decent leveled ones. Oh, Alright, this one looks like a real good candidate. Uh, these guys are eat berries. So we might as well put the SI into its taming slot, which is the, the zero slot on your hotbar. And then you should be able to walk up behind the pig. In this case is actually more towards the front. Interesting. At any rate, they're a passive team, so all you need to do is just follow them around until they're hungry and give them more berries. And eventually they'll be your friend. And it's mine. Don't you go anywhere. Alright. The lovely thing about the, the pig also is that you can ride it without a saddle. So kind of handy. Its energy, however, its stamina, is usually quite atrocious. It uses it very, very quickly. Unlike something like a bear, uh, the bears are really good for their stamina drain. Okay, well, we're at grown this starter island. On the pig that I actually got, I have put all of the maps, and I collected a heap of H3 maps. And not a single one of them are for this island. It is my experience uh, in the past that the maps that you collect on this island are never for this island. They're always for another island. So, we're off back to the little starter uh, settlement. 
So this guy is pretty much just a, a cosmetic guy. You can have things that will um, do up your ship, basically. So your different skins for your sails and um, mastheads and bulkheads and things like that. Uh, so just basically cosmetic things for your boats and whatnot. Uh, this guy is your crew recruiter. Don't have any coins because we haven't done a treasure yet. But that's where you can get some crew in when you're playing single player like myself. Uh, that's how you're going to sail your ships without having to man every aspect of the boat. Now, you actually stay there, pig. I don't want you out here just yet. Cat's freaking out everywhere. Alright, so this guy sells boats. So we're going to basically grab one of these. I'm probably going to get the ramshackle sloop. But I need to go off and grab a whole bunch more fibres and a whole bunch more wood. And we'll purchase a boat from him. Okay, we grab a basic sloop. Iron beard first. And when you have a mount or followers or NPCs and you want to get them on the boat, just have them follow you. And when you jump on the boat, they should actually swim out and jump on the boat themselves. Come on, little piggy. You can do it. And there you go. Get him on no longer on follow. Alright, so this ship's already set up. There is a sail, so because I don't have any crew yet, I actually have to man the sail. I actually put it up, put it down, uh, and change its direction as needed. And you'll see in the top right hand corner, the sails are currently pointing straight ahead. They're the green half circles. The grey crosses indicate that there's no one manning those sails. And the white arrow is the direction of the wind. And so I will be able to change the sails. I can choose to rotate the sails. I need to hold on. And when you choose, at the moment I'm on the zero degree angle. And so if I wanted it to be into the wind, I could basically put it to minus 15 or maybe a little bit further. But at the moment they're registering as green. If you take them out of the wind, you can see that it's slightly changing colour. So it's not too bad in that direction, but it's not the best. Nice bold green is the best. If I change that one all the way around, the bottom sail now has turned red so it's no longer catching the wind so it's not very good at all so we'll rotate these sails get them into position and when we have a look at our map we're actually going to find that we're actually on the wrong side of the island to be able to go and scout out the other ones so i'm going to have to sail out and around and go back in the other direction basically i want to go that way all right well here we go Basically, once you're in control, you can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a lot of text. It's probably worth reading that just so that you can actually understand what the different controls are for the boat. Uh, I won't go into them too much, mainly because the game provides you with in-game text on how each of those individual things go. At the moment, I'm an anchor, and I should just be able to press W as if you're doing your normal WSAD things, and it will lift anchor. Full open sail. All right, off we go. And we're finally on the next island over. And it is identical. So when we look at our map, uh, I'll zoom out here. I'm on the northern island, and it is exactly the same, just in a different direction. There's the head with the fresh water in front of it, and there's the little city. Now, first thing to do is test these maps and see if I've got one that actually belongs to this island. And the, oh, there we go. And there's the beacon. Now it's very, very important that you don't carry multiple maps when you go... Oh, hey, there it is. Don't take multiple maps with you when you're going to do these treasures. So I wouldn't want to take all of these off this peak and carry them in my inventory. Because if there's any double ups, I could get multiple spawns of the armies of the dams. And it becomes a very, very difficult fight. As it is, this one pig, it's pretty good, but it's still probably not going to be enough. Okay, let's get off. Pig should just follow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look around and I'm going to see if I can get maybe two more pigs. And then we're going to go and do treasure. Got two of my pigs. Uh, I've managed to get myself well, it's two females and one male. Uh, so we get our 
uh, mate boosted creatures. So the little love hearts basically mean you have a male and a female, and they get boosted, I think, attack and defense just by being mate boosted. It's quite handy. So I'm going to get these two up front. And then they're moving at a crawl. Not like they're overburdened. But as you become close to the beacon, the armies of the. Oh, there we go. That's better. The armies of the damn should spawn. Oh, yeah, there we go. Only a level 13. That's not too bad. Off we go. And the pigs should make sure work of this, really. There's actually not that many of them. Something is actually uh, causing torpor damage there, which is interesting. I hadn't actually seen that before. Okay, jump these off here, send those guys down. Off you go. Now, once you've cleared your treasure out, you get your shovel equipped, and voila! First person digging. The chest didn't open. A little bit of a graphical glitch, but we got one 0 0.7 quality loot. Let's have a quick look. Ah yes, the loot doesn't seem to have changed very much from when I played last either. Predominantly blueprints. Uh, there's a couple of actual items in there. Okay, that's nice. In the past you wouldn't get many actual items, and they did say they changed that. But it's common treasure, so they've got a hell of a lot of common blueprints, which are pretty much worthless. I'll, I'll chuck all of them out. Um, I may keep some of these items because they're a little bit better than what I've got. There's a few items that I don't actually have yet. But the main thing that we want to keep is the coins. So now I can buy two crew and put them onto the sloop. And they can actually then control the sails. Alright, well, let's get up here. Thanks for watching Skarvig in the Atlas. It's been wonderful getting back into the game and starting from scratch. I don't really mind starting again. So, uh, I think I've already finished most of the game before the map changed anyway. Alright, well, make sure that if you found this interesting, you go ahead and like, comment and subscribe. And I will, in the next episode, go and find an island that I would like to actually set up my base on. Now, I already have some base locations that I found interesting in the last episode where I was actually exploring the new map and just seeing what the devs had actually done with it. And yeah, we'll get straight stuck into it. We'll build a new base and start looking to make a shipyard so we can get something a bit bigger than a tiny little slip and go hunting ships that did. It'll be lots and lots of fun. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.